Chapter 967 is, without a doubt, the most important chapter yet. Shonen Oji, here to dig deeper into your favorite anime and manga, and in this video I'm going to discuss the story of Laugh Tale, as well as the events on Zo and Fishman Island. Before I begin, make sure to comment below the video. Please do let me know, what did you think of this week's chapter? With all that out of the way, let's begin this discussion of chapter 967. So of course, the bit about this chapter that it has everyone talking is the picture of Roger laughing. Now, I think this is what really makes this chapter so great, and this is what I want to devote most of my time to talking about. This scene with Roger finding the One Piece is so critical, not the, not just to this chapter, but in my opinion, to the entire story of One Piece. Because for the longest time, Luffy has been notorious for his laugh and his smile. And the same can be said of Roger. You usually see Roger smiling. And of course, it's a jolly Roger. So it's obviously like a archetype of pirates to like always have that grin on their face. But what I really liked about this particular scene, when they find the One Piece and they learn everything there is about like the secret of the world and the void century, what I really like about this is if a sane person, like if your average Joe had found the One Piece, they would probably fall to the ground and be like completely like lost, like not know what to do with themselves. It would just be so much to absorb at once. I mean, think about it. If you discovered all the conspiracies that your government was hiding behind you, if you discovered everything there is to know, like with the exception of like space, everything there is to know about like the political world and civilization, it would be something that would make you freak out. But with Roger and his crew, they sit there and maybe for like a second, they sit there to take it in. But we see Roger laugh to the point of joyful tears. And what I love about this is that it really demonstrates why we love Luffy and why we love Roger, which is they see like life for what it is and how life can be a comedy and they just laugh. And I think what I love about this scene with Roger laughing so much is it shows that he hasn't changed as a person. If you look at Luffy, he's always laughing throughout the story. Whenever he meets a new character, whenever they uh, beat a new enemy, especially like when they finish what they're doing on an island, they laugh, they have a lot of fun, they have a celebration. It shows life and everything you do is a celebration and this is the mentality of Luffy. Uh, it's the idea that it's the journey, not the destination. And this couldn't be more of a perfect analogy for what happens with the Roger pirates. You, again, it's the idea of like Roger versus like a normal person. A normal person would have been like freaking out and it would have like completely transformed them to like discover like the truth to the universe. But because this is Roger and because being king of the pirates means more to the journey of uh, adventuring across the world rather than discovering the One Piece. When Roger finally discovers the One Piece, he's still completely the same person. Even when he's face to face with the truth of the world. And this is how I interpret the laugh. And I think what's so masterful, what's so artistic about this one panel is if you read nothing else about One Piece, I think if you were to take this panel and show it to somebody, this would be the panel to describe One Piece because the whole point of One Piece is that life is a journey. Life is an adventure. So life is something to be celebrated. And again, this is what Roger shows us and this is why I love that Roger laughs. Next, I want to talk about the stuff that happened on Fishman Island. So when they go to Fishman Island, one thing that happened that was really interesting and it happened on Zo, but we saw like Roger and Odin reacting to the voices of the Sea Kings. And 
I think this is really interesting because people have been talking and some people have said that Odin and the Kozuki family, they might be Ds or maybe like Odin is just a D, but there's the idea that Odin is a D. And this is certainly an argument to make in favor of that because we see that both Odin and Roger, who obviously is a D, can speak with the kings. And this is something that is also shown with Luffy, who is a D, and Momonosuke. So it seems to be something like uh, tied to blood, some, tied to family. And it could be that Odin is a D, but there is clearly some sort of link between the Kozuki family and the Ds. Because Luffy and Roger obviously aren't biologically related, so it has to do with the D clan. So it would make sense that Odin and the Kozukis are Ds, but it could just be kind of like the Minks and the Kozukis have some sort of link. It could be that the D clan and the Kozuki clan have some sort of link demonstrated in their ability to speak with sea kings and great animals. The other thing I want to talk about about Fishman Island was the poneglyphs and um, the discussion of uh, Neptune, the weapon, or excuse me, Poseidon. And what I really liked about this was that we're kind of getting more or less a recap of all the like really big uh, tidbits, not so much with like Luffy and his crew, but like the One Piece universe. We're touching on poneglyphs, on the weapons, on the mysterious ability to talk to sea kings so it would appear because roger and odin had this link it would appear that the kozuki clan somehow has a shared interest in all of this which again this is the flashback so it makes sense that that's being discussed now but what this shows is that a lot of this could be answered, specifically the like missing links between all this stuff. We could possibly discover how all of this is connected more or less in Wano afterwards. Now, how much of that we'll learn about is left to be discovered, but my prediction based on this chapter is that we're going to learn at least what the Kozuki clan contributed because they obviously contributed to the Poneglyphs. So I think we're going to learn a substantial amount about the universe either in the end of Wano or right before they leave Wano. Then of course, Roger and the pirates went to Zo, and it was more or less the same as Fishman Island. Uh, we see them react to the animals. So it only adds to that mysterious power. Um, I like seeing the scene with Pedro. I thought that was cool. Um, I didn't really think it needed anything new. I think anything we were going to get out of that, we got in Whole Cake Island. Um, I like seeing that uh, Goat King, that Ram King. I thought he was just cute. Um, I think it's interesting the way Odin reacted to the road poneglyph there and when he saw the Kozuki crest, as if like he had like known about it, but he didn't really believe it until he saw it. Um, it could just be that he thought it was really cool to see it there in a foreign place, but it kind of leads itself to the idea that the Kozukis like don't really talk about it that much. And it's more of like a story than like, they treat it more of like a story as like a historical fact. So again, it just adds to the idea that all these connections are waiting to be discovered and they're not like commonly known. And finally, I want to talk about Wano. Specifically, when Odin and Roger got to Wano, everyone was waiting for Odin. But Odin obviously decides to say Roger. But we can see that there were already um, factories being built, even though the power change hadn't complete. At least it doesn't seem like Kaido has come to power yet, nor has... Um, Orochi. But this is something that Odin clearly is able to identify because he says something seems off, something seems different. And I thought this is a really good foreshadow to what's to come because 
what I've been saying for weeks now, months, is when the heck is Kaido going to show up? And I think this is a good indication that, like, Kaido didn't just, like, show up. This is clearly a scheme that Orochi has been working towards because, again, it's happening, like, slowly and steady. So I think what's going to happen is, because we know that after they discover the One Piece, Odin is like, okay, I want to go, I want to open the gates. So they're going to go there, and then that is when Kaido is going to show up if he isn't already there, and that is going to be Odin's end. So just based on that one little factory and the way Odin reacted, I believe, not next week because it's a break, but I believe this is going to be the end of the flashback. And that is it for this chapter review. I know there's a lot more to talk about, but that's just everything I wanted to talk about. Again, make sure to comment below and let me know what you thought of this week's chapter. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe so you can see more chapter reviews. Thank you for listening, and I hope to hear from you soon.